Welcome to the channel. About two years ago, I had this metal building behind me put up, and from the get-go, we were gonna finish the inside, which is a little bit different than what other people would do. Usually put up a pole barn and finish the inside. If you're gonna put up the metal and things like that, that's pretty common for our area. There's some reasons why we didn't do that, and we're gonna explain it in the compilation video. But for those of you who are new to the channel, we're gonna go through the entire process. You'll just get to see little snippets of how we finished everything in the inside. And I'm gonna give a little bit of commentary of why we did some things when we're at that point. And then at the end, I'm gonna give you a review of what I've thought about the building after the past two years. The cement pad is about 10 inches thick in the middle and then it tapers out to about six inches on the outside. I wanted it thick in the center, just in case we ever decide to put a lift in the building. Our property is basically a rock pile. That's why we went with the metal building instead of something like a pole barn. I also don't really like having the poles in the ground. With this sort of a setup, my building's gonna be completely up out of the ground. We put an addition on our house in 2019 and our excavator almost gave up because there was so much rock around the house. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot to these buildings when all the metal's on the trailer. We put our metal building on a cement pad, but they can also be installed on gravel or asphalt. You just have to make sure that the site is prepared before they'll schedule the installation. I actually had to email pictures of the cement pad before they'd even schedule the installation. This is a Carolina Carport brand building, and we ordered it through Allen's Factory Outlet. It's a 22 by 31 building, but that's a little bit deceiving because it is 22 feet wide, but it's only 30 feet long. I think the 31 foot comes from the overhang in the front. They want six inches of uh, like an apron going around the building. If I would have known that the building was 30 feet long instead of 31, then I could have made the concrete about a foot smaller. Another reason I went with the metal building is I got a garage in a day. I work a full-time job and also do a lot of side jobs, and it would have taken me a long time to find the time to actually build one of these buildings, and I'm pretty picky, so I don't really want other people doing work for me. And throughout the entire finishing process, I was actually filming YouTube videos, doing maintenance and repairs on my cars, and I also had some friends who were working on their cars as well, so I was able to use the building right away, and it's been used pretty much steady since it was put up. Framing around the supports was kind of a pain, but I got a little creative and I think it worked out pretty well. We have a lot of electrical videos in our electrical playlist that show everything from planning an electrical circuit to installing outlets and GFCI outlets, switches, lights, and ceiling fans. I caulked around the building so I wouldn't get any water underneath the walls, but these doors leak like crazy. And I've been working on them periodically, just trying different things to try to get them sealed up and for the most part it seems like nothing's working and honestly these doors probably would have been a deal breaker if I would have known they were this bad so the only real buyer's remorse that I have are these doors and in the future I'm probably going to try to do something different I framed the walls exactly how you'd frame a house so there is a double top plate that holds all the walls together at the top and if this was just a standalone building, where I would put the ceiling joists or actually where you'd be putting trusses. The entire ceiling, including the drywall, the ceiling joists, and the insulation, is approximately 2,600 pounds. So the beams I made were definitely overkill for what I was trying to support as far as the ceiling is concerned. Later on, you're gonna see the insulation portion, but I used the regular bat insulation up in the ceilings because it was a lot lighter, and then I used the rock sole in the walls. The metal walls in the building aren't plumb, they're not straight up and down. 
And so if you do go to connect things to, the, you know, connect other type of material to them, like I've seen in other videos, uh, you want to kind of take that into account that they're not actually straight up and down. I used bolts and tapcons to anchor the framing to the concrete. I didn't anchor the wood framing to the metal building at all. There are a few places where you can see OSB on the framing and that was used to keep the wall square and give them strength just like regular house framing. These metal buildings have their own loads and I didn't want to anchor the framing to the metal building and possibly overload something where it wasn't designed to carry the weight that I'd be adding to it with the framing. I plan on framing the inside of the building before lumber skyrocketed. These 2x10 by 16 foot ceiling joists were almost $50 each. I only installed 5 joists in the beginning so I could mount a couple of lights. And after a few months after this video I saw the 2x10x16s at Lowe's for $19.98. I ran up, <laughs> ran up to the register, bought 22 of them and did a pickup later. I installed a 100 amp sub panel in my building and I didn't really go into a lot of detail of the wire that I used to run over the building because I was actually using a different type of wire that I used from another project and so um, the wire was fine it was still a 2224 wire I didn't end up changing out the type of wire to a direct barrel wire the main thing I wanted to emphasize when installing this sub panel is that you can't wire them exactly like a main panel in a house the neutral wire and the ground wire have to be separated in a sub panel. Toso sent us this mini split unit and I go through the entire process to install it in a video. I use fiberglass bat insulation in the ceiling because of weight and also the fiberglass bat insulation comes in 10 inch thick insulation so it kind of helped with the installation process. Not a sponsor of the Rockwell insulation, but this stuff is awesome. You do have to use a plastic vapor barrier when installing the Rockwell on exterior walls. I drywalled the entire garage as we intend to use it as an extension of our home. We live in a small farmhouse and it isn't a great place to gather for get togethers during inclement weather. My air compressor has its own room because of how noisy it is. I installed an exterior door on my office to keep out dust. I plan on storing books and I'm also going to have my DVD player in the office so I want to keep it clean.
did frame this one cubby to hold the shelving unit. And one thing that's helped me out a lot is putting wheels on everything. So everything except for my little video game back there in the back has wheels on it. Here's everything all neat and organized. A couple side jobs later, I guarantee this will be a mess. I'm not a Pennsylvania native, by the way. I actually grew up in Idaho and miss it most days. So we're calling the garage complete at this point because we're going to be able to use it for different get-togethers and I'm going to be using it just like a normal garage now, just like it is finished. But with this garage door, we haven't exactly decided what we're going to do as far as maybe try to put a roll-up door in one day or try to put one of those little automatic openers on this door. And so this is about as finished as it's going to be for now. And in case we actually do put in a normal garage door. I have the outlet up there that'll control the door opener. I had to touch up around this cover and I ended up using the same paint that I used about a year ago and it doesn't really match anymore. But this outlet and that hole are going to be for my projector. I'll show how I'm going to make that work in an upcoming video. And keep in mind that this hole runs through a conduit and goes through this hole in the office. And so I'm going to put a shelf in here with a DVD player and I'll be able to run my power cord and my HDMI cable from that outlet over there over to here. And so I'll be able to keep a DVD player in here and keep it clean. So like I said, I don't really like other people doing work for me because I'm kind of a perfectionist and a stickler. And I did all the work in the inside myself because I wanted it to look super nice. And if this gives you any indication of how much I've actually used this building already, I know we filmed a lot of videos in here, but I've done a pretty good job of jacking up the floor already. One thing I plan on doing in the future is having the floor epoxied, and I don't really know a whole lot about it. And so if you've had your garage epoxied and maybe had some things go wrong or had some things go right, if you could please put that in the comments because honestly that's one thing that I know nothing about and I don't wanna just go to Lowe's or something and go get the epoxy and put it on the floor not really know anything about it. I think I'm actually going to have somebody put the epoxy down, just somebody that does it as their nine to five job. So I'm so glad I got this garage done. There's a lot of projects that I need to get done that I've kind of been waiting until I get everything kind of arranged and where I want it so I can just bring projects in here, work on them and get them out of the way. And there's a lot of outside projects we're gonna be doing this summer, a lot of welding projects. I'm gonna to try to um, actually put a flatbed on my truck this year. And I have another trailer that I'm gonna finish building and a few things for my tractor. And then of course, like little things um, with the garage, like as far as the projector and just some little things to kind of make it more like a little homely part kind of party area. So just kind of as a follow up review, there are a couple complaints that I do have with the building. And number one are these doors. These man doors are absolutely horrible. It isn't so much that they are just kind of um, flimsy or whatever. It's not so much that that bothers me. It's more the fact that they leak. So I've tried to do a number of things to seal up the outside and no matter what I do, I keep getting water in here. And I know for a fact that it is not the corners that are leaking. It's actually around the door. And I guess what happens is water comes and hits against the door and it'll hit the threshold and it'll leak inside. But I have silicone along the edges and I've siliconed along the outside of the door as well, and I still can't get anything to work. So I'd be very grateful if anybody passed along any information of what they did to keep these from leaking. The whole rest of the building doesn't leak around the outside from when I put the silicone around the building. It doesn't leak in the corners, nothing like that. It's just around these doors. The other thing I don't really like about the garage is the doors they give you. They're, they're great for what they are. They're just the typical roll up doors, really simple. And when we had the door, when we actually had the building installed, the door was broken because the little seam part came apart. And so that's one of the things that I do worry about is, you know, how, mu how much use can this thing take until, you know, maybe that falls apart again. And that's kind of why we're on the fence about 
do we replace the door with maybe a regular garage type door or do we just tough it out with this and hopefully nothing goes wrong. Other than that, we absolutely love the building. It's really structurally sound. We live on top of a hill, although it's also a rock pile. So we live on top of this, this hill, rock pile, and we get tons of wind up here. We never really hear the building creaking or doing anything like that. It's really structurally sound and everything is still put together like day one. We haven't had any fading or anything like that. It looks really, really good. So we're super happy with the building and I'm just glad that all of this is done. We can just start using it like a regular building. We're so grateful for everyone's support of our channel and thanks for watching.